Yes, Anthropic just announced Opus 4.1, which is an upgrade to Opus 4 on agentic tasks, real world coding, and reasoning. But if you're like me, you might be wondering, how does this compare to past models? Well, the good thing is this video is part of a series where we use the same prompt against all those past models and capture the output of those to see how they go about fulfilling the needs of that prompt. And this is gonna be no different. So let's go see how Opus 4.1 goes about fulfilling this prompt. At the time of this recording in Visual Studio Code via GitHub Copilot, Claude Opus 4.1 is available via preview at a 10x variable, uh, only available in the ask mode of Copilot, not in agent or edit mode just yet. So that'd be something to check out as things progress, as this model gets added to more of these code assistant tools like this, you might have further access beyond what we're seeing right now in here. So if I go to ask and I switch to 4.1, I'm gonna give it the prompt. And that prompt is, for those of you that have been following along with the series, you know we wanted to create a secure Node.js application. It's a note-taking application, and we really emphasize that it's important for it to be secure and production ready so that I don't get fired. I'm under a tight deadline here, and I have some serious constraints, and I hope it takes it seriously. So let's see how it does. Really quickly, it came back and it said, sure, here's a proposed directory structure for a secure Node app, which gives us SRC folder, in there, there's a couple of subfolders with config, middleware, models, routes, controllers, and all that fun stuff. Not unlike what we've seen in the past, so pretty good so far. Some tests even, I think that's going a little bit further than some of the past models. And then there's a security markdown file, which we've kind of seen here and there too. So I'm gonna choose the option to create a workspace from here. I'm currently in the same repository that we've been using throughout this series. It's the AI code security repository up on GitHub and I created a separate folder for this that's called Claude Opus 4.1. All right, let's click on Create Workspace. I'm gonna tell it to use this folder and it's going about doing that for me. Now, while it's doing that, let's make it a little bit smaller. The interesting thing is that even though I'm in ask mode, it does show me the contents of each file that Claude Opus 4.1 is suggesting here in this ask mode. So instead of it creating it for me on the file system directly, it generated all this really quickly, which is probably the fastest I've seen any other model do it so far. I need then Copilot and VS Code to create all the files for me, which was super nice that that was available. Instead of in the past, if you've been following along with the series, you've seen me have to manually copy and paste things over, create the whole file and folder structure and all that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and implement all of this stuff manually, unfortunately. So we're gonna give it another minute or so to finish doing all this. Oh, look at that, it finished. And there we go, we have the source config, the controllers, the middleware. So the next step is to see, does this actually run? In order for us to be able to do that, we need to install our dependencies. Double check the package JSON here. We see we have express mongoose for connecting to a MongoDB database, .env for loading environment variables, helmet for the security headers, rate limiting with express rate limit, validator to help validate user input and that sort of thing some encryption, JSON web token, and then some dev dependencies for testing, which is nice to see as well. So let's npm install. Uh, everything is up to date. Oh, let me CD into secure notes app. npm install. We'll run npm test. See how the tests go, if they all pass or not. There's two test suites. There's the auth test and notes test. And the test suite failed. Text encoder is not defined when trying to require super tests in that file. Off test, let's click on that. Interesting, adjust the path as necessary. Is that not correct? No, that is the correct path. All right, so the tests don't work out of the box for some reason. I'm not gonna go and debug that right now for the sake of the time of this video, but let's see if we can run it. Nope, we cannot run it. Mongoose is there, but it's not actually being implemented. We could remove it potentially. I don't know why it got added then. And same with the rate limiting. Uh, there's authentication authorization mentioned here, data protection by using encryption environment variables, input validation and sanitization, rate limiting, error handling, security headers, use HTTPS, do audits, logging, monitoring, all general good high level advice. There's a helmet config. All right, so some further feedback on Opus 4.1. Again, this is in ask mode via Copilot. I asked it about the error that I was getting, which is this route posts error when I'm trying to run the application. And it looks like it figured out that there's a lot of issues 
actually. The error is occurring because the auth controller, again, that Opus 4.1 suggested is not properly exporting its methods. Looking at that, it's using ES6 module syntax. This is JavaScript specific for folks that maybe aren't aware, while the rest of it, which is export default, right? While the rest of your application uses common JS, which is require or module exports. So kind of odd to see this happening in such a like newer model that's out here. And I honestly haven't seen that very much in the past models. So I'm not sure what happened here or what, or what would cause it to do this, right? Additionally, the controller is defined as a class, but the route is trying to use it as an object with methods. So here's how to fix it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe out, essentially, I'm going to give it a second try. I'm going to give it a, a second chance, okay? Opus 4.1, you get a second chance. But before I do that, in addition to the original code that was generated by Opus 4.1, I want to take a look at the security aspect of it, right? Because we mentioned that it needs to be secure and production ready. One, it's not really production ready because I can't run this thing and the tests don't run. But two, we haven't checked the security of it. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to use sneak for that and have it run a scan against the open source dependencies that Opus 4.1 suggested to use in this project and the code it wrote. And with that in mind, let's make some room so we can see here what is happening. We have the open source security. It found five issues there. We have a couple of high severity vulnerabilities in Mongoose and a few medium severity vulnerabilities in JSON Web Token. We have what's called an improper authentication happening with that one and then improper neutralization of special elements in data query logic. This is a new one that I don't think I've seen before, actually. So let's take a look at this really quick. One of the things I love about Sneak is being able to learn more about different types of vulnerabilities that are out there and getting educated on this as a developer. So in this case, we have Mongoose is a MongoDB object modeling tool designed to work in an asynchronous environment. Yes, I'm familiar with that. Effective versions of this package are vulnerable to the improper neutralization of special elements in data query logic due to the improper handling of the where match queries. Okay, so when you're writing database queries against a MongoDB using this where clause, uh, it's not properly handling it in this version of Mongoose. So an attacker can manipulate search queries to inject malicious code. Yikes. So in order to fix this, we'd upgrade to version 6.13.5 or 7 or 8 or higher in these cases. So right now we are using 5.13.23, which is something of note and of interest here is that even with these latest models that ha should be trained on newer information, they're not taking advantage of newer versions of open source packages that you might depend upon in your projects. Like Mongoose has version six, seven, and eight available in it, but yet it pointed us to five, version five of Mongoose package. Why is that? All right, so that's just one of the vulnerabilities found in the dependencies that we have, but what about the code that it wrote well, not too bad, actually. One, we have a couple of ones that we probably can ignore here, which are in the tests because it's just a test file. It's not going to be running in production. But then this encryption utility file has a medium severity in here, and it says use of broken or risky cryptographic algorithm. So here we have the crypto library, and we're creating a decipher IV. And what's happening here is the cipher blockchaining mode that we're being used does not provide integrity. We need to consider using Galloy or counter mode. I'm not an expert in cryptography, but uh, maybe those of you that are out there that are watching this can understand this better. Nonetheless, it's not good that it generated in this way. We would expect it to use an approach that is secure and not broken or risky algorithm, right? So those are two of the several security issues that Sneak picked up on for us and told us about. With that in mind, I'm gonna see if we can get Opus 4.1 to generate a new project with that same prompt and see how it does, if we can get at least something running. So there's two things. I'm rerunning it with Opus 4.1. I think part of the problem that I had before is that by default, Copilot was running it with a new workspace command being used in that. If I open up a new tab while that's running, I might've just messed that up. And I paste the prompt in here. By default, we could see that uh, GitHub Copilot has the workspace kind of tool that's running there. And it uses the slash new command here. So I think GitHub Copilot was interfering a little bit with the output or what was being sent to Opus 4.1 and thus affecting the output we were getting from that model. So in this case, we're going to rerun this without that and see how it does. All right. Yeah, we're already getting a different response right away. 
Let me create a production ready secure node.js application. Here's the package JSON. Look at that. It's okay. So it must have been GitHub Copilot messing with things a bit because look right off the bat from what we just saw before, we were using Mongoose version five. And now with Opus 4.1, without that workspace command being added, it's using Mongoose 8.3.2, okay? So note to everybody, don't make that same mistake. If you're using Opus 4.1 in GitHub Copilot, make sure to run it without the workspace command added to it so you can get the true results from Claude Opus 4.1. I'm gonna let it run and do its thing. I don't know if it's done yet. No, nope, it's still working. We'll come back when it's done and see the results. All right, Claude Opus 4.1 finished. Gave us a summary of everything that's going on here. Uh, basically, it's security features implemented, typical stuff that we've seen in the past. You can quickly pause the video and take a look at all that. We have the NPM install, set up a MongoDB locally, update environment variables, and then we can run NPM start. This implementation protects against OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities and follows security best practices. Your job should be safe. Awesome. Thanks, Opus 4.1. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and implement all of this stuff manually, unfortunately. And then when we come back, we'll give it a go and see how it runs. All right, I've gone through and implemented everything that Opus 4.1 mentioned here. One of the nice things with Copilot, even though it's in ask mode down here and not agent mode, I can just click on this button here to apply and it would create that file for me, update it based on the suggestions there. So now that that is all done, I'm going to run npm install on this. Now, one thing to note too, for context is this secure notes app folder, I will rename as like secure notes app first attempt and then isolate everything that we're changing here into a separate folder. But for the sake of time, let's run npm install off of this, which should just pick up on that main package JSON in the root of the directory here. And now we have that node modules folder in the root of the directory as well. So we should be good to go with that. And next we should be able to then run npm start based on the package JSON here like that. So we'll clear this npm start. Now I know we're gonna run into an issue because I haven't set up a database connection just yet, but it should at least get us started from here. So in order to get it fully running, at least we've already made progress and gotten a step further than the first attempt. I'm gonna step away for a second to get a MongoDB instance set up that we can actually connect to. All right, I got a MongoDB instance. We could see that once I started the application, it says connected securely and is running on port 3000. So let's open up the browser to localhost 3000 to see the app running and see how it looks. All right, understandably, uh, we know that there isn't any visuals or UI that was created as part of this. So when we go to localhost 3000, it says cannot get uh, the root directory here. So it means it's strictly just an API that was built out here for note creations that's supposed to be secure. So that said, we can see that there are some routes available to us via the routes folder here. There's auth routes and then there are notes routes. So the auth routes has a register, it has a login, and that's it. So if we wanted to, we can go and test those APIs out if we want further. But the fact that it's running and going makes me a lot happier. Now, next step is to test the security of all of this. All right, so to make sure that we get security results pertaining to just this code and not the other secure notes app from attempt one, I'm gonna isolate everything into a separate folder from here. All right, so I put it in a separate folder called secure notes app attempt two, which is the true authentic way of testing out Opus 4.1 via Copilot here now without that workspace command being added. And then when I run and open up this folder against Sneak, we could see we have just one issue in open source security. It's this cookie one, which is a cross-site scripting one. It's introduced via that CSERF module, which if you've been following along with this series since the beginning for almost a year now, we're getting to, uh, this has been a common issue that comes up in all of the models where it's still relying on the CSERF NPM package and this common issue that's in here, this vulnerability that's always notified about in it. Again, just a medium severity vulnerability, but there are other ways we can approach mitigating the risk of cross-site request forgery in these projects instead of using the CSERF package, like CSRF hyphen CSRF that's out there. Then when it comes to code security, we have one medium severity in the auth.js. We have allocation of resources vulnerability uh, without limits or throttling. And that is because the call to compare password performs user authentication, but it's not protected by any rate limiting mechanism that's out there. So that one's just a medium severity one, not too bad, but still good to know and helpful to see thanks to sneak scanning that for us and telling us about these issues. 
Now, in comparison to, let's say, Sonnet 4, I have that opened up in a separate instance of Visual Studio Code here. And if we look at, make it a little bit bigger, the sneak results of scanning that, this one had three issues in it, two medium and one low when it comes to the open source security and dependencies of the project that was generated by Sonnet 4. And then when it comes to code security, it had a bit more where there is a, a two issues that were medium severity in the app.js file, cross-site scripting, and one in the server.js file, okay? So something of note, if you wanna see more on that, there's a separate video on the channel here in this series that you can go and see the results of how that came to be. So with that said, comparing the two, it looks like a slight improvement with Opus 4.1 from Sonnet 4, for instance. And from a security perspective, it had a slightly less issues that were reported to us and, and we had to worry about in the code and the dependencies that it was relying on in that project. So there you have it. That's Opus 4.1 in action with a one-shot prompt to build a secure note-taking application. What are your thoughts? Have you been using Opus 4.1? Has it improved on things for you when you're using it for code generation purposes? Let me know in the comments below. On that note though, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.